everybody, I'm Joe, this is Matt, we got Patrick behind the camera, and this is Robot Pool Party here at Dragon's Lair in Austin, Texas. As always, we're here with a small collection of nerdy news to discuss right in front of your eyes. Your eye holes. In your eye holes. I'm going to be all up in your eye holes. And... Alright, well then, let's let's start it off then. we got a whole bunch of Netflix news, and by that I mean we've got two items, and one of them may be made up. That's, that's more than we talk about Netflix normally though. What? That's about average. If we average out our Netflixes... <laughs> it's usually about what crap I'm re-watching for the 11th time. Uh, no, we talk we... about Netflix like every time. Yeah, that's true. Because they're always developing shows, and this is one that they may be developing which could be totally cool. And the rumors of a Punisher series on Netflix. I could absolutely see this as being true as something that they they had like in the background and they were like, if Daredevil does well, we'll pull the trigger on this too. So we can have it ready, you know, by the time you yeah. know, that, that buzz dies down. And Daredevil's been getting really really well received. I'm embarrassed to say I still have not watched it. Neither have I. I got... It, it's a process, Patrick, because it's, it's me, good. me and my roommate are going through it's, Supernatural it's a time thing. and Yu-Gi-Oh. Once those two are done, oh, yeah. then we're going to move into Daredevil. So in a couple years. Well, no, we're almost done. We're almost done with both. Because I guess I guess our thought process is Daredevil is a Netflix original series. It's it ain't going anywhere. anywhere. Supernatural and Yu-Gi-Oh, however, might. Yeah, yeah, I mean, they could be contract renegotiations yesterday. They could be gone. We exactly. could go home tonight and there would be no Yu-Gi-Oh. It is the first of the month. We don't know. Yeah, we got to live for the day. we got to yeah. live for the now. Um, but yeah, I mean, I could see them running with a Punisher show. I mean, yeah, it's, I mean, it seems like a no-brainer. I mean, like again, I have not seen Daredevil, but again, what everyone's told me, it's been hit out of the park. Yeah. So, I mean, and Punisher is in a, a vein they could go along the line. There wouldn't be a lot much difference in tone. He's dark. He's yeah. pretty. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, that would be really cool. Um, this one I'm not so sure about. This next series that is not a rumor, it's been confirmed, is that Netflix will be adapting Green Eggs and Ham into a 13 episode show. You know, they. Yeah, I was gonna get a picture of Patrick. That was so great. Yeah, that was a good, that was a good expression for it. Yeah. But you know, they, they just recently, and they put it up, and I haven't watched it yet because I'm afraid to, they recently made a CGI Inspector Gadget cartoon. Are you for real? Uh, yeah, it's been up there. Um, I mean, they've been really pushing their their animated stuff because they they got that contract with DreamWorks, and then they did uh, King Julian from Madagascar, and then they did a Puss in Boots uh, spin-off show. And I watched like the pilot of each, and I wasn't impressed with each. It was really lacking the polish that I've kind of come to expect from Netflix originals. But yeah, King Julian won an uh, yeah an Oscar, an Emmy. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure. Maybe there's more to it. Maybe I just have to go back to it. I mean, they probably have that. that little pilot because like the pilot episode is always the weakest episode yeah, everything I'll have to go back and check yeah. it out but the inspector gadget one i haven't checked out yet i'm afraid to because that was one of my favorite shows growing up really i thought it was lame growing up even i thought it was lame had some of the best atmospheric music from that era oh yeah look the one thing that would have made it not suck is if inspector gadget solved the zone crimes no, but if, I, I if he like that he bumble didn't. onto him with Brain doing all the heavy lifting. He can't recognize his own pets. Brain did not do the heavy lifting. Penny did. She was a humble, good protagonist. I liked Penny a lot in that with her basically magical book. Her iPad. Yeah, and the movie was horrible. The the, the, the is are way better than the movie than Matthew Broderick. I liked the movie when I was like six. Bad movie. Bad movie. I was six. And then they replaced Matthew Broderick with French Stewart. It's really hard. It's not very often that people say the phrase, we've taken a step down from Matthew Broderick. It's really, really difficult to say. Yeah, and they did it with French Stewart. But anyways, uh, back, back, to, back to Dr. Seuss. If they do a, a Green Eggs and Ham uh, show on Netflix, I mean, ask yourself, can it really be any worse than the Dr. Seuss movies that were produced? And I think that's what everyone's scared because that's what everyone expects. Um, because the series is going to be them. So, Sam, I am and Guy. I didn't know the guy had a name. I didn't think he. It said Guy. Yeah, yeah I thought it was just Sam, I am. Yeah, but uh, uh, that guy and Sam, I am are gonna go on wacky adventures, and eventually they're gonna eat the green eggs and ham. And it made me, it, to me, eventually. it sounded like that's but gonna be their season finale. Is like, are they gonna eat it? Turn in next season, well, kind of thing. Their season finale will literally be the last page of that, like, what, twenty-page book? Right. That's. <laughs> that's it's going to be an interesting show. It's probably not going to be very good. But the best part is, is the show is supposed to rhyme. They I said, like that. Everything That's... in the show is supposed to rhyme. But they said that about uh, Cat in the Hat, and he rhymed sometimes. I didn't watch Cat in the Hat. It was a bad movie. In my, in my mind, it didn't exist. All right. The Grinch was a horrible movie. Oh, yeah. The Grinch was better than Cat in the Hat. What? Yeah. 
It was cat in the hat was that bad. It might actually be because Mike Myers is not as talented as Jim Carrey. Because right. I mean, like Grinch was not a good movie, but Jim Carrey was not bad in it. Mm -hmm. All right, this is kind of cool. So there's a bug in the new Sims expansion pack. It lets male characters get pregnant, and male pregnancies get male pregnancies. Male um, characters get pregnant when they're abducted by aliens and then probed, and then they come back down. That's the thing. They gotta get they gotta get pregnant in a really specific way. I mean, they 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 gotta get abducted by aliens, which I could kind of believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. But the fun. The weird thing was the alien abduction uh, happened way too frequently. And that's what was messing everything up. It says uh, this one player had had his sim abducted four times and impregnated four times in one week. Hey, you know, you, you get abducted, it's your responsibility to take care of that. Uh, I wish that happened in more games. I wish that happened in the Mass Effect games. Like, Commander Shepard, now he's got this responsibility to handle. That would make for a much more compelling ending than Mass Effect trilogy really had. Wait, what I'll take your word. This? The Sims. 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 Now, that might be interesting if you had to make actual serious moral choices, choices like, do I go to the clinic? Whoa, Sims just got heavy. Sims I, has been getting really heavy, because like, apparently on the, on the Xbox, you can go work for a drug front. <laughs> All right. You're like, uh, it's like, I work, in the, I work in the restaurant business, but it happens to be a drug front. It's like, even says so. It's like, the game says like, uh, like 10 and up, and it says drug front, and I'm like, are you kidding? Oh, th this isn't on the list, but it's something I, I'd like to rant about real quick in the video game world. Let's, let's do this, dude. It's, it's, it's always entertaining and funny. It is. Okay. And, and it makes me mad. Have you ever heard of the game Shovel Knight? No. Shovel Knight uh, recently, probably last year, came out, and a lot of people love it. I mean, it's supposedly this really, really great old school style game, okay? And they're releasing it on PS4 and Xbox uh, One. I think they probably already have. Um, they each have exclusive characters. I'm a PS4 owner. Um, so my exclusive character is Kratos. Could not care less. Yes. God of War. Uh, I'm shirtless and I'm swinging a chain. I, I'm fine. The one on Xbox One, their exclusive characters are the freaking Battletoads. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Can you talk about a, a difference in quality there? Uh, why are they getting Battletoads at Rare? Work for X, uh, for Microsoft at all? I think at this point, Rare is just, they just need money. It's like, they're, they're, like, you can buy the rights to the Battletoads, you can also buy like their office furniture. Can I like, buy the rights to the Battletoads? <laughs> the carpet. I mean, Rare hasn't been... You know the rare that I knew back in the Super Nintendo days. You could at least choose time. Crash Bandicoot if you're going Sony. That I just, I, I just don't get Kratos, it. Kratos, because you have to play those button mashing games that tell you how to beat them. Swing in the chain, swing in the chain. Patrick just quoted the greatest move of all time, Kung Pao. He spends his days at the top of a waterfall, swinging a chain around his head. <laughs> I love that movie so much. And the weird thing is, that's like the fourth time it came up today, incidentally, without me bringing it up. Well, I think you just planted that Kung Pao bit in, your brain, in everyone's brain and just... But did you hear me talk about it earlier today? <laughs> you see? And, that's, and me and my roommate were talking about it. And it's just, it keeps popping up. It stretches everywhere. It's like Cthulhu. Kung Pao is an ancient one. Kung Pao, I mean, Oscar-worthy movie. Like, go see it. It's great. I did watch parts of uh, Kung Fu Hustle. Yeah, I love Kung Fu Hustle. It's a great movie, too. Kung Pao pairs super... If you're doing like a long movie night, it pairs super well with Black Dynamite. Really? Yes. They're, they're just... They're two... Those movies are made to be watched back-to-back. -back. Yeah. All right. So, uh... <laughs> ne next week? Next week. The whole half hour is just going to be me talking about Kung Pao. All right, Batman 40, Bruce Wayne will quit being Batman. So that means you can expect the bunny suit Batman. Have you, did you slip that up? I, I looked it up um, after I got through all the furry stuff. Um, I did see that it's like a weird like robot suit that has antenna. I think they look more like a flea's, uh, or not a flea. No, no, like a rust monster. It looks like a rust monster's uh, <laughs> antenna. I don't know what a rust monster is. This is from D&D. &D. I'm being nerdy. <laughs> I thought they well, this is like... a good show to be nerdy on. <laughs> it made me think of uh, the sidekick from The Tick. Yeah, Arthur. Arthur? Yeah. yeah, it made me think of a giant robotic Arthur. It's just... It's... It's... it's, 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 it's... Does DC be... know what's going on anymore? Is there is there any coherence? From, like I thought, Jim Lee, who was like the co-publisher, who gave us Wildcats, like a series that I adored in the '90s. Yeah, I just made the the our cameraman throw up in his mouth a little bit. Um, okay, 
Like this again. I don't. I, this is not a massive. It's about about Batman. Okay, go. Something for it. hilarious that I found out last week because me and my movie group we've been watching the, the Dark Knight Rises trilogy. Not my favorite, but it's good. I mean, they're they're good movies. But we got to talking about uh, Bob Kane. You know, mm-hmm. the guy that created Batman, but didn't really do much of anything. He didn't do anything cool he, with it. He was awesome at taking the credit for it. Not so awesome at at you know creating Batman. But anyways, we looked up his gravestone, because his gravestone is notoriously hilarious. And if you haven't looked it up, look it up. Like, right now. Don't stop the video, but, you know, open another tab. Matt's going to look it up right now. The the inscription on it, I, I'm not even going to ruin it for you. I'm going to let Matt look it up, and I'll, and as Matt tries to read it aloud to the camera, I want to watch Matt's reaction of the inscription of Bob Kane's tombstone. It is amazing. I, Patrick's curious about it now, too. Everybody's got to read this. I can't spell tomb. T O M B. Does Bill Finger also have a funny one? I wonder now. I, well, this isn't funny. This is, the problem is this is dead serious. And first of all, it has like a big spotlight of Batman on it. Oh my goodness! How big is this thing? Yeah, I didn't know I was gonna read a paragraph. Would you like me to read it to you? <laughs> right, God but, bestowed a see, dream Ryan. upon Bob Kane. Blessed with divine inspiration and rich imagination, Bob created the legacy known as Batman. Introduced in May 1939, comic book in a, in a May 1939, Batman grew from a tiny, tiny aorta? Acorn. Acorn into a mighty... Into an American icon. A hand of God, creation, Batman and his world person personify the eternal struggle of good versus evil, with God's laws prevailing in the end. Bob Kane, Bruce Wayne, Batman, they are one in the same. <laughs> Bob, yeah. infused with his dual identity character, with his <laughs> own attributes, goodness, kindness, compassion, sensitivity, generosity, intelligence, integrity, courage, purity of spirit, a love of all mankind. Did he make this before he died? Batman is known as the Dark Knight. But through his deeds, he walks in the light of a higher power, as did his creator, Bob Kane. Beloved husband, father, grandfather, in loving memory. That is Bob Kane's tombstone. That, talking about how great Batman is and how great it was that God inspired him to make Batman, on the tombstone of a man that stole the credit for Batman. Thou shalt not kill. Isn't that somewhere? Thou shalt not kill. Plagiarize? Plagiarize? That, steal. That's what I was going for. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not kill is there. But, uh, it, like, aliens will recover that tombstone, and they're going to be like, wow, God made Batman. It's, <laughs> Please, goddamn Batman. It, it's great. I can only hope that when Stan Lee dies, he has something equally as ridiculous. Oh, God. <laughs> about Spider-Man. It was just, I'm sure it's going to be Excelsior, but, like, or it's got... Or, or I, anything I, else that, uh... Like if it goes, I wanted to, I wanted to, to invoke gods that people don't actively worship anymore, like Zeus and Kronos. I want Stan Lee's thing to be like, and Kronos inspired Stan to come up with the thing. <laughs> it, it wouldn't be like an Eternal or a Thanos or something like I don't, that. I don't know, but it's it's just like yeah, that He's, Bob Kane, man. That was a Bob. very long list of traits. That was like a full paragraph of just a listing traits. It's, rest in peace, Bob. You're a real sack of crap. <laughs> All right. Speaking of sacks of crap, this is like a perfect segue. Okay. Uh, Brett Ratner was supposed to direct a live-action Youngblood film in 2009. I have a hard time saying too much about Brett Ratner. I mean, he's he's, he's done a lot, of work, a lot of work with Pixar. Brett Ratner? I'm thinking of somebody else. Brad Bird? I'm thinking of Brad Bird. <laughs> Those are totally different people. I don't know why. Because of Ratner and Ratatouille? I don't know. That, that must have been it. I'm thinking Ratatouille. There's, there's a B sound. Yeah, all right. Brett Ratner. Youngblood. I I clearly don't know what I'm talking about on this topic. So Do you remember Youngblood at all? No. Youngblood no. was a Rob Liefeld's image comic. It was, okay. So, like, it was literally Teen Titans. He just took... <laughs> so it was, Okay, it was a Rob Liefeld production. <laughs> yeah, it, it was, like, literally Teen Titans. He had, like, a, it, it had a, a robot character. It had an archer. Uh, Let's add a couple shoulder pads. Yeah, and pa- pouches galore. <laughs> pouches. It was the most nuttiest comic book ever. And then the fact that they're going to do a movie in 2009, you know, like with the douchiest frat boy director of all time, it was the douchiest possible movie you could possibly make ever. Uh, but, like, I like to think that it was not canceled 
but like much like all of Rob Liefeld's products, it's been just been delayed. Rob Rob Liefeld is the kind of guy that if if he would have been trying to make his rise in the modern age, he'd be he wouldn't have been a, like a comic you know comic guy. He would have been secluded to like a small part of Debian art. Be like I colored Sonic the Hedgehog like taupe and he's my own character I call him Topic the Hedgehog <laughs> like and he has like pouches all over him like, <laughs> Sonic with pouches like how that, awesome would that, that be that describes Rob Layfield perfectly pouches and shoulder pads and, and calling it his own character like that's what he would have been he would have been one of those guys that just draws a character like traces like, it yeah traces it takes like a like a, like a color fill tool makes him a different color and like in my original I signed it it's like a dude that I used to work with back home that would cop like take copyrighted art to put on T-shirts, um, and then sign it like his own. Like there's people, there's people in Johnstown. Watch for him, America, that are walking around with Twilight T-shirts that are signed BB at the bottom, because some stupid frat boy thinks that copying something from the internet and scanning it and slapping on a T-shirt means that he did it. Watch for it, America. BB. BB. B rad. Wait, I, I'm, I'm, I'm actually, I, I want to put, like, Rob Leefield, tag it Rob Leefield, and see if he looks searches. I know, you know he Googles himself. He's the kind of guy who Googles Google himself. himself. So, like, who knows, maybe he can retweet, like, retweet this and be like, well, can you believe this piece of trash garbage? <laughs> and we'll get, like, Leefield fanboys who are, like, well, I imagine Leefield's the kind of guy that most of the people that follow him on Twitter hate him. <laughs> they just they're like, hate following him. Yeah. I do that to a lot of people. They just follow him and just see what kind of stupid crap comes out of their mouth. That's, well, good, man. We can capitalize on that. I'll, I'll put, like, big letters. Rob Leefield, that's all we talk about. Oh, we'll change this thing to the Rob Leefield show. It's comic time, everybody. Comic time. You're the comic time dance. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get a thing. Comic time dance? Yeah! You can do it at home all you want. I ain't doing it. Comic time. You're the comic time dance. Um, just dropping the dignity of the show. <laughs> Did we have a lot of dignity to begin with? We had tons of dignity. Well, I mean, it's just the three of us here today, so we don't got a lot. Yeah. But if we had Reiner, he'd add gravitas. Well, there's so many people we could pull here that would that would class this show up. But like Sir Patrick Stewart. <laughs> he'd do it we too. We could totally get Sir Patrick Stewart. He would do it. Or Bob Kane's headstone. I'm sure he could. Do, he would do it if we could get his attention. <laughs> Dear Patrick Stewart, please come to our web show. Yes. <laughs> We've had seven viewers. Well, Gail yes. Simone follows you on Twitter, right? She's a she comic book writer. I very she, she, re respect. she retweets me from time to time, and she like she and uh, uh, Kelly Sue DeConnick retweeted my Kickstarter project. But yeah, I, mean, I don't know. We'll be like, hey, hey, Patrick Stewart, this could be your big break. <laughs> <laughs> you should wholly invite her. Like, if she's ever in Austin, I know she plays hero clicks. Well, I don't know. That, that'll be it. That, that, that'll be the thing. We can't because she sees the episodes where I call I call her out for phoning in Batgirl. Well, that I, that's why I wonder. Shall I wonder to see her power bomb you through this table? <laughs> no, oh, no, no, it'll happen. <laughs> she posts all the time about how she likes Bane, so she probably knows some wrestling moves. She'll take her. Well, right she has some luchador moves. That's fine. She'll her karana you right through the table. Either way, Gail Simone shows up here. You're going through the table. <laughs> I just, that's just how it is. That's, I can't do anything about that. You're like, yeah, Simone, get the I, table. I, I find her to be an extremely classy lady, and I think she's a good writer, and she won't hurt me. She'll take you out. I mean, there's nothing. If she tells me to put you through the table. I have to do it. She ain't going to tell you to. She's just going to do it herself. Yeah. That, that's how it's going to be. That's... All right. Okay. That's, you feel confident <laughs> that you'll survive that. That's fine. But let's do the comics right now. Let's do yours since apparently it's the. Or you want to save the best I'm for last? Save the best for last. And I'm going to rant about it. I'm probably not going to rant about it. But Matt put all these awesome comics about shaving, mm -hmm. which are pretty cool. The only one about shaving, the rest about gum. Oh man, they're still pushing this gum? I think it's, they're going to push this gum until the end of Convergence. This has at least been three months in a row they've been pushing this gum. Like. You can feel the melting Arctic ice caps in I, your mouth. I tell you, I feel something. Global All right. in your mouth, man. So, let's see, I got so cat fight. Silk number one. Oh, Silk. Oh, Silk number three. All right. I, I, I wasn't sure wh where the title was at first. Like, there's a lot going on. Yes. And I, there's a... Uh, 
uh, black cat kicking Silk in the face. All right, in the same cat fight. Yes. So I, I haven't even read Silk because are they going to keep her? Are they going to? They're going to keep her. That's the reason why, like, I'm not mad at uh, um, Spider Gwen. All right. Have you have you had a chance to uh, to to look through this yet? No, I have not. All right. Okay. So I'll, I won't point out that you know, like like Goliath from Gargoyles is in it. That'd be great. Um, I would totally love a Goliath comic, a uh, Gargoyles comic book, because that was like a really there is some freaking story behind that show. And, like it got in. And an enormous amount of next generation actors. Mm -hmm. And Brett Spiner was fuck. Two takes, freaks. <laughs> and he was a Xanatos. Yes. All right. Are you ready for this intensifying winter mint? Is it intensifying? Is it winter mint? Intensifying winter mint. Five go. Sell out your entire freaking company. Like you just didn't do an ad for Five Gun right now. Yeah, that's okay. So we got Convergence number four. Convergence number four. I don't recognize people on here. Um, I do, literally do not. I don't know <laughs> either. <laughs> then why did you buy this? Because the freaking Convergence is like hurry up and get over with. I I Convergence has reaffirmed my belief that company wide crossovers are not worth your time. Oh, uh, there's it. no such thing. Uh, like I looked for the new Renee and I couldn't find it. I guess is it, it's, it, it's I don't not think out, it's yet. out yet. Yeah. Uh, so then we got Justice Incarnate, uh, Multiversity. So, again, I don't know anything about this. I, I think it's a whole bunch of alternate takes and stuff like that. So. Oh, so it's like a that's a rule uh, sixty three Aquaman. Mm -hmm. um, that uh, vampire. Doctor Savannah. Doctor Savannah. Huh. Interesting. This one actually might. What? I, you don't want to see the back of this because it's pretty awesome. There's something really cool coming up. Hey, Patrick, look at this. I cannot see that. Well. How can you not see that, man? Oh, whoa, whoa. Yeah, you yeah. Start hanging out with, uh, what's her face? Uh, hello. I'm not going to say, I'm saying what's her face, so I'm not telling you who she is. I know who she is. It might be pretty interesting. All right. So did Jonas endorse a DC book? Possibly. Not really. I mean, I mean, car crashes are interesting. <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of. Blue Beetle. I thought you'd like Blue Beetle. Well, the question's on it. Yeah. Um, the Vic, Vic Sage question. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't, I don't know if they still have him. In, well, if this is if this is old DC, he's probably not involved in the Trinity of Sin stuff. No, no, know, right? it's old DC. I'm, I'm assuming it's all it's the old Charleston characters. Yeah. Uh, okay. That's what made me pick it up. Hmm. You have to let me know about that. I, I mean, I I honestly have absolutely zero interest in a uh, Blue Beetle. Um, I, I figured you'd go for it because you're, you're, a, you're a big question fan, so I figured yeah. it was all Charles like, oh, yeah. yeah, that's fine. There you go. That's cool. That one gets passing great. Yeah. Uh, Detective Comets yeah. with uh, Huntress and... Which Robin is that? Because uh, he, he has like a Batman symbol with like an R taped over his chest. That looks like a very bizarre looking face, too. I don't know what that could be. <laughs> oh, and I just opened it up to something that's pretty cool. Um, so I, I, don't, I won't spoil that for you, so I don't know if that's a focus of the show, or the comic show, so I don't know. That manual show, you have to read and do stuff yourself. What's interesting, I find the artwork to be a little bit, like... I think this, the selling point of Convergence, and what's been the great thing about Convergence, is that it's alternate takes, it's like almost every alternate take on the, the characters. Yeah. You know, so, um, like, people that would... That has been ruined irreversibly by like New Fifty Two, have a chance to come back and shine. <laughs> yes, like most of them. Yeah, like most of them. Like I mean, like even Batman when we get Bat Bunny, the Robo Bunny. Robo Bunny. Yeah. And then we got Shazam, like a nice classic looking Shazam cover. I, I like it just based on the cover alone. I mean, Shazam's one of those characters that I have a fondness for just because he's so, he's yeah. a little orphan Annie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and even like again, the artwork in it looks like it's from that era like it's just very yeah. classical and yeah I, I the, this one I mean oh, is a tiger in it there's a tiger in a, in a pinstripe suit yeah because the tiger the tiger wasn't a tiger right. he's a he's in the a last pinstripe talk. suit yeah he talks like a walking is that Prince Tufton no it's Tawny oh yeah Tawny talked he wasn't a tiger tiger that's right it's been a while <laughs> it's been a while and I've been like Reading been these old, uh, it's been a while. I found these old uh, Commandi comics, like recently that I've been reading online. So it's kind of oh, like that's the, a, the that's, Last Boy on Earth. Yeah, the Last Boy on Earth. Those are some fun old comics if you can find them. It seems like a good one. They were a good part of Joe's favorite DC show, Commandi: The Last Boy on Earth. <laughs> yes. 
Uh, Brave right. and the Bold. Here's mine. Yeah. Brave and the Bold is a fantastic show. I already know what this is, but, and this is going to be awesome. But cha It's all shiny, and it's 80s out. It is totally 80s out. And it is the Misfits. Yep. And they look cool as all get all. There's a lot of things I like about it. If I, if I can go on my little rant. Go for it, yo. Number one, with I probably talked about it before, but the gem books are actually making Kimber from the Gems Group and Stormer from the Misfits. Which one's Stormer? And couple. The blue-haired one. And the other thing I like about it, in the old one, um, if I'm gonna, I'm gonna go on my little my little weird rant. In Let's the, follow Joe this place. In, in, see where it takes us. <laughs> follow me along. Um, in the old, and ah, hey, you charged me a dollar for a hug. That was barely a hug. Do you want a free one? <laughs> I want my dollar back. Uh, that dollar went to great donation, sir. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Is that conversion Shazam? Shazam. Yeah, it is converted Shazam. So that was Sarah. Sorry, I love Shazam. All right. It's so great. So here, Jim. Oh, oh. Okay. here's uh, the, thing I, the other thing I really like about this. I hope we got uh, that uh, uh, part. Uh, uh, I hope that was on know. frame. Was it on frame? Uh, the arms not so much, but you can kind of see the shoulders. People can imagine. Uh, they can use their, you know, their imagination for it. Just right. think raised the roof. So like the original gem. Um, basically, the girls in Gem on both sides were basically like Barbie dolls. I mean, they're all kind of identical, mm -hmm. you know, everything. Identical waistlines, you know, all that. Um, Stormer is actually, like, curvy. Mm -hmm. And that's a very positive, like, body positive image for, uh, like, you know, teens and younger people that are reading this. All I'm saying is I think it's a cool thing. And as a bigger guy, I actually, I really like that they're, they're presenting that. I mean, it's not like, you know, she's, she's not singled out for being a bigger person. It's just there. She's bigger, and that's that's who she is, and she's comfortable in that. I like that kind of stuff for obvious reasons. But yeah, that's really all I wanted to talk about that. Who's the drummer? I thought the Misfits were a three-piece. Uh, I forget the name of the drummer. But yeah, I don't I don't know. She doesn't even look familiar. She kind of got the... Um, who's that stupid chick from Scott Pilgrim vs. the World? Envy. Oh, she's got an Envy. Um, <laughs> that, one, that one, too. What was her name? Uh, uh, I thought it was... It was Kim or something, wasn't it? No, Kim was no, no, no. She didn't look like Kim the drummer. She's got this MV Adams vibe to it. Oh, okay. Yeah, the ex girlfriend. Yeah, scene. No. But I don't know. I, I like I like the gem book so far. The it's very colorful, very well drawn. I don't know. I think it's a good update on a series that you know it, it, we're rebooting everything else. Might as well. Yeah, and, and this is a good reboot. This is an enjoyable reboot for people that enjoy. It wasn't like Galaxy today. Quest. I actually haven't had a chance to read that Galaxy Quest. You're the one that was telling me it was disappointing. Well, the well, the book itself, I, I haven't like picked up the, any other other ones, like the. I don't know. It was okay. I trusted your belief in that. I could have been missing out on Galaxy Quest related awesomeness. Well, the first one was alright. It was dull. I don't, it just wasn't. It wasn't what I wanted. It wasn't what I wanted. So I said, "The heck with it." But it uh, was the pilot episode. Well, I can go back and I can buy all the other ones. But I sure you can buy the discount bin. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for tuning in. Oh, now, now you did it. Thanks. I'm out. <laughs>